I guess if you want to sort of label me, I'm what you might call a fire-breathing science clown. I don't know how many of you know how to eat fire, so I decided to teach you. Oh yeah, yeah, you tell none of your parents about this week. And I want to do this because I believe the, the sideshow, the freak show and fire eating are uniquely suited for your aptitudes. Because what I'm going to demonstrate is not a, a magic trick. And I want to draw just a slight bit of separation because I, I, I love magic shows, I really do. I'm just not a magician. And fire eating is a physics demonstration, not a trick. So just to be clear, I am not a magician. I am a nerd. My people. So what this means is that when you learn how to eat fire, and you will, when you learn how to eat fire, you don't need to rely on any sort of secret preparation. For example, you may wonder, what's the fluid? Gasoline. It doesn't matter. It could be anything. I use white gas because it's fairly cheap and easy to come across, but I could use diesel or unleaded or fingernail polish. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the physics. What about the sticks? Well, just rods that I've wrapped in a bit of Kevlar, something to act as a medium for my accelerant. But I can take a, a, a bit of a, a gym sock and cut it up and wrap it around a stick and, and dip it in fingernail polish remover and, and do fire eating. It wouldn't change the physics. It just doesn't burn that differently at that rate. Once you understand that you have a medium and accelerant, all you're doing is playing with the oxygen. So you probably know this, but, but fire is essentially just rusting really, really, really fast. It's oxidization of a different type, yielding carbon instead of an oxide. So if you deny it oxygen, there's no oxidization. That's all fire eating is. It's the art of lighting and then extinguishing fire with panache. Right, thank you. But I must admit, the only reason I do that is to show you that line of separation between the world of illusion and the world of science, that I have, in fact, nothing to hide. So there is no secret preparation when I do this with my mouth, that there is no, oh, secret coating or uh, a hidden trap door or uh, an assistant or a live animal or a trap door or smoke or mirrors, that all I'm doing is creating a fire through combustion and then denying that fire the oxygen it needs to survive with panache. Right? <laughs> now that you know at least as much as I do about how fire eating works on a molecular level, I want to show you what you can really do with it. So, so far all I've played with is one element of the three. I've, I've played with the oxygen, simply denying it and, well, eating the fire or extinguishing the flame with my mouth. I want to try something um, a little more advanced. I want to show you a transfer. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Okay. Right here in my hand, if you would. And you see how it gets kind of shiny? Is that showing up in the light? Okay, that's a little bit of the fuel. It won't light on my hand very well right now, but if I get it warm, it will light. And if I were to get it warm by, say, lighting the torch and then doing that, my hand would light on fire for a moment, and I could light a torch off my hand, which is what I'm going to do, but with my face. You're welcome. Thank you. I will warn you, though, that's a little more advanced trick, so you're going to want to practice a bit at home before you show your friends. I want to show you one more thing you can play with. So now we've played with the oxygen and the accelerant itself, the sort of liquid nature, but I want to show you something that um, was first developed in the mid-1700s, which if you think about how long we've been playing with fire, the mid-1700s is quite a long progression. I want to show you something that's sort of a, a three in one. So what I'm going to do is this. In just a moment, I'm going to light the torch. Pretend for a moment that's the torch. I'm going to put it in my mouth and pull it out, still 
lit. I'm not going to close my mouth. I'm not going to deny it oxygen. It goes in lit. It comes out lit. Why? I want to leave behind a pocket of fumes. If the fumes are warm like the oil, they'll burst into flame at a certain point, which is me lighting my face on fire. <laughs> Once you've lit your face on fire, have some fun with it. What I'm going to do is then light one of the torches off of my face. I will then probably have to go back in a second time, but what I'm going to attempt in the 18th century was called the human candelabra. What you want to look for are three distinctive points of flame. Thank you very much.